Welcome to this five minute DMP primer. We're gonna talk about what a DMP is, what's in it for you, and what are the resources you need to actually manage it. And what the heck does pool have to do with the DMP? So let's pretend this cue ball is data that we already know about our customers and our leads. Their shopping cart data, their online behavioral data, their explicit criteria, basically everything we know. Now, let's pretend the other balls are people we don't know, but that we'd like to target and segment for advertising. And by the way, wouldn't it be amazing if we could somehow take our first party data and map it to third party data to run lookalike modeling so that we're identifying our best customers and going out and finding many more just like them. Now, let's pretend that the pool table is our marketing universe and the pockets are devices and channels. What we want to do is we want to send instructions to target and segment the right people with the right offer at the right time. And also, it'd be great if we had some analytics that would help support the success of those instructions. Well, that's what DMP is in a nutshell. Well, let's take a look deeper. Again, welcome to this five minute DMP primer. My name is Steve Kellogg. We're gonna talk about what a DMP is, what they do and why you should even care. And finally, we'll wrap it up with what resources you need to actually manage a DMP. So we've heard a lot of acronyms out there, a DSP, a DMP, an SSP. What's the difference? Well, a DMP is a data management platform. It sorts and stores and analyzes data for marketers, agencies, and publishers. Now a DSP, which stands for Demand Side Platform, is software that centralizes media buying and planning and it allows automated ad inventory purchases. Now an SSP is similar to a DSP, but it focuses mainly on publishers. So think of it this way, DMPs handle audience management, DSPs handle ad purchasing, and SSPs handle ad selling. So what are some of the typical use cases for a DMP? Well, on the B2C side, number one is to improve the ROI of marketing and advertising activities according to a recent survey. That was followed up by the ability to turn data into insight, and then it was a tie for first-party data integration and reduction of waste in media buying, followed by data normalization. Now on the B2B side, a typical use case would be to match first-party data with third-party data so that you can run lookalike modeling and help to understand where your customers are living and breathing and interacting with your content on which channel and which device. It really helps connect the B2B identity dots. Another great benefit is to address account-based targeting. To be able to group people under the same company and who are in the same decision stream and then collect data from these individuals but aggregate them at the company level. Some other use cases across both B2B and B2C include being able to serve targeted online media to those who are just not responding to emails. Also, reduce ad spend by actually removing your current customers so you're not paying for them. Another great benefit, identify the best and the worst audience performances. And of course, we talked about lookalike modeling, web personalization where you're taking your optimization to a whole new level, dynamic content, attribution modeling, and hey, if you actually wanted to monetize your data, you could even do that. One of the big benefits of connecting all these identity dots is that we get closer to fulfilling on the expectations our customers already have of us. And that is, they expect us to know their entire history from the moment they first get introduced to their last call with customer service. Whether they're on their cell, their laptop, in a store, at an event, they fully expect us to recognize them and continue the conversation. They hate it when we start over. They don't think in terms of channels or devices. To them, they're all the same. After all, it's still the same person we're talking to. According to industry analysts, it won't be too long before marketing owns the entire customer experience. If that's the case, we need to get serious about connecting these identity dots. In the end, our customers won't compare our experiences with those of our competitors. They'll compare our experiences with those of their best experiences, from Disneyland and Nordstrom. All right, well basically a DMP does four things. It imports data, obviously customer data that you own, and third-party data in an effort to do some identity matching. From there, it finds segments based on your criteria. After that, it sends instructions on who to target, 
on what channel with what message. And finally, it measures the results and works to improve the instructions. So in a nutshell, we take our first party, our second party, and our third party data, along with offline data, CRM data, sales data, and other online data sources. It goes into a DMP platform, which hopes to unify all that data, build audiences, and then spit it out across the various marketing channels and devices. So if all this sounds a little automagical, well, in a way it is. So how does the unification of data actually work? Well, this is where data matching platforms come into play. Basically, we take our first party data and we send it to one of these data matching platforms. Platforms such as Datalogix, which was just acquired by Oracle, LiveRamp, Newstar, and others. From there, it takes the first party IDs and then runs it through second and third party data, along with online and offline data, to come up with an identity schema. From there, it tries to map and cross map these first and third party data identities and then tries to stitch them all together. After that, it removes and strips out any PII information and then finally sends it back to DMP. So what kind of third party data is available? You name it, DMPs leverage hundreds and hundreds of data providers. So here we see an example of how to build a segment within a DMP. In this case, it's Oracle's Blue Chi. You simply check the boxes and start to determine what types of segments you're looking for whether it's those that are quote, in market for a certain product or service, as well as specific demographic information like education, household, you name it. You can also do some Boolean on this, showing those that you want to include as well as those that you want to exclude. At the end of all this, you get a count of the total reach along with maximum price. Once you've created your segments, you can then do some campaigning, in this case again in Blue Kai, you can do media targeting, dynamic creative optimization, site optimization, search, and other types of campaigns. Now, how do we turn all this data into action? Well, here's what a DMP can provide. Find out which audiences deliver the highest ROI. Understand exactly who your target audience is based on actual converters. You can see campaign performance relative to one another and to each audience segment. You can analyze data to make informed decision on budget and campaign allocations. You can even monitor which channels are delivering better than average conversion. Identify which creative is working to drive the most conversion with specific audiences. Pinpoint which display, search, mobile, and social bid prices are either too high or too low. And finally, how did each campaign impact other marketing touch points? Other things you can discover is what is the profile of my average site visitor, customer, and converter? What products and services are they interested in? How do audiences behave differently on specific channels? And how can I expand my prospecting pool to reach new audiences? Lastly, let's talk about the resources you need to manage a DMP. You need five distinct personas, and some of these you may already have. You'll definitely need a data cowboy, someone who could round up all the data from all the pastures. You need a segmentation sleuth, someone who lives and breathes segmentation taxonomies. You need a digital native who grew up with social and digital media. <laughs> you need an analytics geek, someone who is a natural data storyteller. And lastly, you need a handyman or woman, a marketing operations genius. So if we step back to the 30,000 foot level, we need to understand where a DMP platform sits within the entire CMO tech stack. And here we see in red where the DMP is. You notice that it interacts with most of your other platforms, including your website, your CMS, your marketing automation, BI analytics and Rami analytics, on and on and on. The challenge is, if you don't have all of these implemented, you're gonna need a roadmap to determine which you should start with next. I'm hoping this primer has piqued your interest into wanting to know more about DMPs. You might think they're actually a silver bullet, and some might actually agree with you. It's just amazing that this level of technology exists. For next steps, please reach out, and we can talk about how a DMP can help your company. Or maybe you already have one and you need to enhance it.